Well, today on Nation, a window cleaning podcast, it's all for the newbies. Today we are talking about how to start a window cleaning company. So if you're thinking about it, if you're on the fence, maybe, stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What's up? If it's your first time here, it's going to be a great episode for you, but have a look around. I've been doing this for five years. Every single week, have not missed a week yet. Knock on wood. So, you got tons of content to go back on. If you don't know who I am, my name is Jersey from Window Cleaning Resource. I've been in the game a very, very, very long time. I've successfully sold a few businesses, and I'm here to help. I'm also a rep for windowcleaner.com. That's what I do. I do sales, and I want to be your rep. You can literally have a guy. That's what I do. So if you have any supplies, you want to buy something, you got questions, you got anything, my number, my cell, my direct number is 862-312-2026. If you got everything, put it in your cart at windowcleaner.com and just let me know. Hey, Jersey, it's in my cart. I'd love to put the order in for you. It's how I make cheddar and it costs you nothing extra. Now you got a guy. If you also are in window cleaning, you're of course going to be, want to be one of the cool kids and get the American Window Cleaner magazine. That's where all these cool stickers you see all over come from. Uh, the magazine is shipped to your door every single month. It's 69 bucks. It's nothing. Amazing articles, pictures, culture, stickers, everything. So go to awcmag.com, get yourself a subscription, and be absolutely amazing. Be one of the cool kids. You know you want to. Anyway. Okay, those are my shameless plugs, but let's get to the show. If you are absolutely new to the industry, welcome. We're going to show you, kind of talk a little bit about the business side of what you need to do to get into business. Window cleaning is absolutely amazing. It's phenomenal. It is an amazing industry. Not only do we make great money, but you get a chance to kind of be your own boss. And if you are at all good at business... Your business is absolutely amazingly secure. Now, not 100% because people go out of business, but it's up to you, just like any business. Here's something to think about when you're looking at getting into business. We clean glass. We clean windows. That's one of the main things we do. Have you ever seen windows in your area? Yeah. Every house, every building, every commercial property, route job, everybody has windows, right? And... You're going to be there to help them get them clean. But there's a few things you want to do when getting into the business, right? They're simple. You can always go way into it. It all depends really on your dollar amount, what you're getting into. That all comes up to what you're doing as far as uh, price, how much you're spending, what you're getting equipment-wise, how much marketing you're getting, how big you want to go. If you got $5,000 sitting around, which I guess isn't really a lot, but that will give you enough to start a website. That will get you enough for all the media and marketing and stuff you need. Good equipment, right? You got $10,000, you get even better equipment. You get more stuff, right? But if you only got 500 bucks sitting around, you can still get into window cleaning. Obviously, you're not getting a website and everything else for that. But you're going to be into window cleaning. And the biggest thing you can do when starting a business is to start. So many people hem and haw and... Is it the right time? What do I do? How do I share? What do I, you know, learn? I don't know enough. I, I can't charge people for this thing I don't know. Well, every single company, every company that you've ever seen, ever, from a mechanic to a uh, window cleaner to Coca-Cola, everybody's done something for the first time at one point. You become a pro over years. That's why somebody who's seasoned and a veteran can charge more than you going into the system, going into the, the, the industry, because they know more. But absolutely will somebody pay you for it. You don't need to tell them, hey, I'm new and don't know what I'm doing. Right? You don't need to do that. Don't tell them you've been doing this for 30 years either. But they're willing to have you do the service. They don't want to do it. Right? Window cleaning is a luxury. Understand that right now. When you get into a luxury business, there is a whole different parameter of how you sell, why people buy, what triggers them to buy, and everything. And for all that, 
go back and watch. There's hundreds and hundreds of episodes here to watch on uh, Window Cleaning uh, Resource, our YouTube page. Uh, if you're listening to everything on podcast, WCR Nation, find it. But first and foremost, let's talk about what you need to get going. The biggest part that you need to start, it's a name. Just a name. Something simple. Yes, I know you are absolutely clever and you're going to come up with something absolutely original like uh, clear view or pain in the glass. <laughs> Those have been done. There's a thousand billion of them. Search your area no matter what your name is. A big thing is, is that you're probably going to have the same name as somebody else. But if you're in Ohio and there's a company in California that does the same thing with the same name, it's not that bad. But if somebody's in your town, you don't want to name it the same thing, right? And you also want to name it something that's not restrictive. A lot of people get in the company, they name it, you know, uh, Windows Only. Well, then they end up doing pressure washing and they end up changing the name, right? So you don't need to overthink it. It could be just your name. But just something that differentiates you from the other guys. Simple name. Once you have the name, every piece of marketing, advertisement, business card, flyer, everything comes off of that name. So you gotta pick a name and it's gotta be halfway decent. A big way that I've always tried to pick names according to what we have is what type of email or uh, website I can get. Buying a domain is super cheap, even if you're not building it yet. So if your name is Clearview, and you tried to search Clearview window cleaning, it's not going to pop up. It's really, really bad if you can only find Clearview window cleaning in my specific city.com. If it's too long, people aren't going to look at it. They're not going to like it. They're not going to use it, right? So try to find something that's a little bit smaller, right? Simple abbreviations. Don't do dashes or hyphens either. But once you have your name, now you know who you're going to be. Sometimes people wait too long and they, they throw out, oh, here's, here's five different names. Which one do you like? A big thing with a name is you just have to like it. No one's going to care. I know guys who have had window cleaning companies called John's Window Cleaning. I've known companies who have been called Universal Services Incorporated. The gambit from one to the other works, and it's up to you to like the name. Nobody else has to like it, right? So once you create the name, now it's time to get registered as a company. Now, there are a bunch of things that go crazy. You can go into an S corporation, which is a type of filing. You can go into an LLC, which you've probably heard, or you can go as a sole proprietor. Now. I'd always suggest going in as an LLC. But again, if you're working on a $500 budget, the paperwork for that may not be conducive to your $500. Because that LLC could be anywhere from $75 for the listing up to more, depending on where you go. But an LLC is super, super easy. You can also file an LLC for free in your area. Just search anywhere online, LLC how to get an LLC. You see a thousand people trying to charge you for it. And the reason is because it's free, they do the hard work for you and charge you a couple bucks and that's what they make. You don't need to go that route. Search, filing, or creating an LLC. Now, an LLC to get into business, which again, watch other episodes and different business stuff, obviously. But it just means that you're basically limiting your liability. Well, technically LLC, limited liability company, right? Corporation, technically. But what that does is it separates you from your company. Now, if you are a DBA, right? So if you are a sole proprietor, guys do this all the time. They just start, oh, I'm doing Windows. You can just write a check out to me, right? It's the same bank account, same everything, same taxes, same everything. If somebody sues your company, they sue you because you are your company. With an LLC, now you have a comp company entity that would take the heat from anything and you're just um, a member of that company, right? So find your name, figure out how to set it up and get set up as a company. Now you're a legal company. There's filings and other things you're gonna have to follow with. There's business stuff. 
but your company. Now, you can go and get the most important part of your entire company, which is your bank account. If you have an LLC and you have the form that says, hey, you're now registered as an LLC, you can go start a company, a uh, bank account under that company, right? There's nothing worse than you doing a job for somebody and going, oh, just make that payable to cash or, or make that payable to me. You want a company because people will write your company checks. This will allow you to take credit cards. Lots of easy ways to do that, by the way. But start a company, get that bank account. All right, you got a company, you got a business, you got a name, you got a bank account, boom. You could technically start cleaning as soon as you get the stuff. But I will tell you, and this is going to be a do as I say, not as I do type thing. Because up to you and how you do this. But insurance, liability insurance is absolutely a necessity. Now, if you believe that or you don't believe that, do your thing. I'm going to see. So if you're watching my video, that's why my nose is crinkling. But it's up to you. It's up to you on if you're going to get liability insurance. I'm telling you, if you can, get it. If you're trying to ease into this and you really don't have much, it may not be something you can get right away, I would strongly, strongly suggest getting it. Liability insurance. I owned a company, my first one for 16 years, and I didn't use it once. But if I needed to or something happened or poo hit the fan, I could. And I had it, and it was there, and it was a protection, and that's what a company does, right? So I'd always suggest to get it, but that's one thing. So you got your bank account. You know who you are. You have a business. Now it's time to do what you want to do, right? It's what you're going to do with your company. Let's go back to insurance real quick because I kind of glanced over that one. What you're looking for is a general liability policy. General liability or gen lie you'll hear however they word it, right? Uh, those are general policies to cover your liability. That means that according to their verbiage, every company is different, it will cover X, Y, Z. If something happens in regards to damage to property from some of your property, right? I drop a ladder, a squeegee, it covered it. If somebody gets hurt because of your equipment, it covers it. It will also show you uh, uh, inclusions and exclusions, things it doesn't cover, right? So you want to check over that. Ballpark for uh, liability insurance, you're talking about mm, around $100 a month mark. You can find stuff for more. You can find stuff for less. You can get more coverages. Insurance is not an expense. Insurance is something that will protect you if something happens, obviously. It's a gambling thing. I've had a car insurance policy for as long as I've driven, right? Right? I can't tell you that I've ever used it for anything. I've had a homeowner's insurance policy and after six months of, or six years of having my house, I used it. I had to use it. We had a storm come through, ripped my roof apart, right? A roof, it's like $20,000, $21,000. I didn't pay for that because I had insurance. Now, in that same side is maybe Maybe you have insurance for something else like an automobile. And like me, I've never used my auto insurance for anything. But if I do, I have it. That's general liability. When you start getting into the liability side of having a business, people see dollar signs. You could have started this company this morning. And somebody sees you and you drop a ladder and it hits their toe or something. Oh, man. Woo, I'm going to be rich. I get to be rich because I'm going to sue you for everything you have, right? And if somebody thinks they're going to be rich because of you, they're sadly mistaken you're brand new to business. But if you have liability insurance, it's going to then protect you from being able to basically lose everything. Anyway, I don't want to scare you on liability, but sometimes people go, well, I'll get that when I'm, I'm just a small company. Well, yeah, but the minute you do work is the minute you're liable. I don't ever understand that. Sometimes people are like, well, I'm just a small company. 
but you're a company. If you're a company, that doesn't matter if you're small or big. It matters that you're a company. You still need money to build a business. You know, some people go out there and they'll spend fifty dollars on a little bit of equipment and be like, "I'm up starting." Fine, if that's what you want to do. But you're gonna have such a, a crappy start. You're gonna be running in in cement. You know. So anyway, we got the name in the bank account and the insurance. Hopefully. Now you can start working on your image of your company. Now here's where we start to get into things that can be one side or the other. If you show up to your first couple jobs and you're in a nice clothes, but yet they don't say your company name, it's not the end of the world. It's not the end of the world. But I'm gonna tell you a little secret. Business in general is not about doing the work. It's not about getting paid for the work. Obviously, that's the end result to a transaction. But our companies, our business, our industry is about creating an experience. Now, if you're new to the show, I'm going to give an example I use pretty much once a month. But it's Apple. When you buy an Apple product, you open that box, which is thick. There's no seams in the box. Have you ever noticed that? Buy an iPad, iPhone, anything. There's no seams. It's not a cardboard box. It's beautiful. The tolerances are super tight, right? Slides off. When you open up that phone, there's plastic on everything that you get to peel. Oh, so satisfying, right? It's the experience of a new product. It's the reason why there are people out there, and I'm not one of them, but there are people out there who buy a new Apple product every single time one comes out. I have the iPhone 7, but the iPhone 8 just came out. What's different? Not a thing. Well, the bezel's a little bit more, but but they'll go and buy it. Why? It's because the experience of buying it is so good. Nobody needs what we're selling. You're a window cleaner. Nobody needs window cleaning. Have you ever heard of somebody dying because they didn't get window cleaning? Hasn't happened. We're a luxury. So we have to create an experience. And if you create an amazing experience, the name of the game is to get those people to use you again. Absolutely. New customers. I could go out and get 100 customers, and if I had those 100 customers every single month, I don't need more customers. It's not about more customers. It's about how often they use you. If you create a great experience, you're an awesome person, your company's great, they're happy because they got their windows cleaned, they're going to use you again. So when I talk apparel, yes, it costs money, but you're talking, you could get custom shirts for like 20 bucks a shirt, silk screen, simple, one color, nothing shirts, right? 20 bucks a shirt, you can probably get an embroidered one if you go online. There are places all over that will embroider this stuff for you. But getting something like that just makes you legit. It just makes the experience when you show up, it could be your first job ever, you've never touched a squeegee, but you show up with nice looking equipment, nice looking shirts, Your truck doesn't look like a dumpster fire. You don't look like you smell like an ashtray or a can of tuna. It's great. You're building towards the experience. That's why we take our shoes off. We use booties. We talk to people. We, you know, have everything nicely printed in our logos and everything else look amazing and everything. And why you have shirts, why you have insurance, why you have a bank account. So you don't have to say, oh, just write that to Jersey. No, have a business name. See, we're building an experience for everybody so that we can create an awesome repeat customer base. The earlier on you know this repeat customer base part, the better off you'll be, 100%, right? So let's get some shirts. Doesn't have to be crazy, right? Now we look the part, we could be paid. We know our name so we can tell you who we are. But I can't clean a window because I don't have stuff. Now, if you're new to this show, you don't know this yet, but I I talk about equipment sometimes, but it's not about equipment. Yes, I sell equipment. That's literally what I do for a living. But it's not really about that, especially in this show. This is the business side of things. It doesn't really come down to equipment. But I'll tell you this. The better the equipment you buy to start, the easier the entire thing is. Now, if you go to Home Depot and you buy a shower squeegee and you try it, not only are you going to look like a fool, but it's not, it's going to be so horrible. You're not going to learn anything until you buy something better. A good set of equipment, decent scrubber and squeegee and towels 
You're talking 25, 4, 5, 30, $75 maybe for those three tools. Maybe. I have a kit that I put together of all the things I like. It's like $700, $800. And that you're really set, right? So if your budget's that high, buy a little bit of nicer stuff. You're never going to be bummed that you bought a carbon fiber trad pull over some garbage one that breaks after a week, right? It's just up to your budget. It's really easy for me to tell you how much to spend. But if you got questions, truly, genuinely call me, text me, 862-312-2026. It's literally what I'll do. Uh, I have to say, though, if you've never used me, uh, if you've not dealt with a completely honest person, sometimes it's a little uh, different. If you ask me about certain products, which I won't talk about on here, I'll tell you they're junk. Uh, if you ask me about other products, I'll tell you I love them. And it's my opinion. It's not anybody else's opinion. So it's not all about how much to spend. It's that what you get for what you spend, right? By the way, as something I'll use code, some of you may know, but I own one of the most expensive traditional tools that exists. I have one. I got it for free because I work here. But I, uh, I do not ever tell anybody to buy one. I really think this particular item is really awesome. It's really amazing. But the price that they are does not make sense. And I could not peel that much money out of my wallet to buy one. So I never tell anybody that they should buy one. They sell out instantly anyway, right? I'll tell you that. But I'll also tell you there's other tools that are on the lower end spectrum wise, garbage tools. Some people really like them. They live by them. I hate them. But I'll tell you the truth. Anyway, that's equipment. Once you get a scrubber, that's a T-bar with a little fuzzy sleeve. Once you get a squeegee, that's the part with the rubber that takes it off. You're going to need a bucket, soap, which you can use just regular Blue Dawn if you want. And towels. Now the towels do not go by microfibers. Microfibers don't work. They're not they're not hydrophilic. They don't suck up water. They're hydrophobic. So get some huck towels. We sell huck towels. You could probably buy them some other places, but they're like 24 bucks for a dozen. Get those. They're lint-free. They suck up water. Don't go buy microfibers. Same price, and you're gonna be very sad that you got those. But with those simple things, you're up and running. You got equipment. If you have a little bit more, you're never gonna be bummed. You spent more money on the equipment that makes you the money. I have squeegees that I've been out in the field for 10 years. They get passed around. The next new crews come in, they, oh, I'll try that one. They're still using the stuff. You're going to make your money back. You spend a couple hundred dollars on equipment, you'll make that back in like four hours, right? Now, yes, there's water fed, if you've heard about that. It's a way to clean uh, windows to haul up. There are huge systems and you can spend $20,000 on that if you want. You don't need that right away. You just don't. Does it make your job easier and uh, more amazing? Yes, but you also have to earn it sometimes, right? If you got a big budget, cool, get the stuff. We get a lot of people who just buy everything right away. They just want to start super and on a really good foot. Their business will be more accelerated than the next guy, but you don't need the stuff, right? So now you got all that. You got the equipment. You got to check your local laws because you need to see if there's tax. Different states have different tax codes and things and what services you're doing. And if you charge tax, you want to be legal into the book. Just search a uh, small business in your area and there's going to be something that you'll be able to probably talk to somebody. There's a lot of assets out there to help, right? Check that though, because if you're getting into it, one of the problems is, is that you will get into it and it'll be too late and then you have to backtrack and it's a whole big thing. Which, speaking of doing that, the next item that you're going to need to get into this is a CRM. Now, don't get overwhelmed. You can do trials of different programs, but a simple QuickBooks, you've heard of that? It's an accounting software. It will print invoices for you. It will track everything. It'll do all that. I think the trial's like 25, 30 bucks, something like that. It goes up after that, but super affordable. Now you have something to track the people. You need to track that for taxes. You need to track that for advertising and dollars and just see where you're at. You need all of that. So get yourself a CRM. A CRM, by the way, stands for Customer Relation Management Manager, maybe. Anyway, accounting software. There are better versions out there too. 
There are versions that will do your booking and everything. The bigger you get, the more you'll need to get a better system. Like if you go to Walmart, Walmart systems, right? Their, their computers, their uh, internet, their, their uh, credit cards, they're all of that have to be absolutely amazing because they're such a big company. As a little company, this is one thing you don't necessarily need to go crazy with. But don't go out there and do index cards. It's going to do you no favors if you skip this super affordable option. Getting into window cleaning in a business in general, you're in a year or two, and now you're trying to figure out what you can do to kind of save. It just doesn't make sense, right? After all that said and done, you got the stuff. You are a company. You can do the work. You got the gear. But now comes the most important part. Getting customers. Getting customers will always be the most important part. Getting and keeping customers. Because if you have somebody and go, hey, you, I would like to do this work for you. It will cost you $200. As soon as you say yes, a transaction has been made. Now I have a company because I'm a professional. Professional, the definition means you're getting paid for something. right? So get paid for that. What you're doing, get paid. Marketing is huge. Marketing is a part where you need to spend a little bit of dough. Marketing is where you spend money on business cards. It's door hangers, flyers. Maybe you're doing EDDM, postcards, right? Start with the marketing stuff where you can do it cheaper or free. Go on Facebook groups. Create a Facebook page. Take pictures. Make it awesome. Do all of that. Don't tell everybody how cheap you are. That doesn't get you work. That's We're a service. We're a luxury service. What does is pictures and things that justify that you exist and that you're real. That's marketing. When you start getting more time, more money than time, now you can pay for the stuff. You can pay for marketing. You have more time than money, go out there. Hand out flyers. Go on Craigslist. It's free. Facebook groups. It's free. Instagram. It's free. TikTok. It's free. TikTok's not great because it's more the whole country. But Facebook groups, go search moms of in your town. You're going to find groups of people who are very, very busy. They got little kids. They can't be cleaning their windows. They just need some help. Guess what? Don't be spammy. Answer some questions. Help them. Who are you? Tell them who you are. Once you do all that, stuff starts coming in. But the key, like I said from the beginning is new customers are great, repeat customers are better. It took you a lot of time and money, effort, to get the customer in the first place. You had to spend money to tell them who you were. You had to do a job so that they could, I'm on the fence until I get proven that I like these guys, right? As soon as somebody already likes you, they know you, they've used you, it's really easy to keep them going. That's where a dentist close comes in. I talk about that other and it's just saying at the very end, okay, great. Did you want to schedule your next service for three months or six months? If you start that right away, your company will explode, right? If you focused on getting people happy more often, your business will explode. If you get done with that job, you go, okay, great. Thanks. It was nice meeting you. And you go to the next one. Like, all right, now I got to do all this extra effort to go find another person. You just had a person who's super interested in your product, they liked it and they used you, they spent money with you, meaning they've already told you that for sure they like you and will use you. Why not keep them going? Repeat is the key to growth. Repeat is the key to growth. New customers is growth at a very expensive and very hard process, basically, right? If you don't remember anything I say from this and you're getting into business, remember this. Repeat customers. More frequently, repeating customers will be the growth of your business. When you see a company who is doing a million dollars after two years, it's really, really hard to do those kind of numbers. Market's got to be right. Your business has to be right. Your hustle has to be right. But more importantly, they have to have so many repeat customers that are repeating at a great number so that all of their new customers come in on top of that and they're, those ones are repeating. The way to get bigger is to have more jobs. More jobs can be coming from the existing customers, right? 
Build an experience. The experience is what will make people buy and come back to you and talk about you. And if they're talking about you, they're leaving you reviews and referrals. Those are key. Everything we've done to start the company, now it's your job to keep it going. You need to feed it. You need to make sure, and your hustle is what dictates this. You got a company. 30 minutes later, you figured everything out you need to start this company. Yes, there's lots of other things. There's facets and everything, and I'm always here to help, of course, but you have a company now if you've did, done those things. It is your job to either hustle or die. You know those other times where you'd have like a boss, oh, you're doing good. Well, you know, you messed up here, but you're doing good. You got to do good. Come on, you do good. And you go, well, yeah, but, you know, the company's doing good, so no one's here to tell you that anymore. Starting a business, as scary and intimidating as it sounds, 90% of companies fail the first year. It's absolutely true. The reason is is not because of the economy or the this or they use the wrong tool or the the number one reason and pretty much only reason is the business owner. If you do not hustle, you will fail. If you go, oh man, I just don't have anybody to, and you don't go out there and get it, you will fail. Now, when I say that, in winter, it's really hard right now to go out there and get stuff, right? But the rest of the year plans for the slow times. It is you who does not go out and get the stuff. There's so much work out there and so many people that want to be happy and use your service. They just haven't seen it yet. It's your job now to prove to everyone that you can do this. You are the reason you fail or you succeed. So now that I've terrified you, go out there and start a company. And if you have, I know you're going to need some stuff. So call me, 862-312-2026. Yes, that's a cell phone. Call me, text me, let me know everything's in your cart. Ask away. I'd love to get you equipment ordered. I want to be a rep from the start. That's what I do. It costs you nothing extra to have a guy. That's what we do here. Go to windowcleaner.com. Check everything out. It's the greatest website ever for window cleaning. And get yourself a magazine. Be a step up already. Interesting articles, awesome business things, theories, concepts, pictures, stickers, all mailed to your door every single month. Go to awcmag.com. Be serious about all this. Get yourself a magazine like everybody else. Be epic when it comes to being a cool kid. You need to do all this stuff, and it's up to you. So, like always, go out there, start a company if you haven't yet, but more importantly, be epic.